It's one of the greatest adventures of the human mind to find out where we came from, where we are, and of course, in the end, where we're going. In 1929, Edwin Hubble made the observation that galaxies around us are continuously moving away at a fast pace. That meant, at one point in history, maybe billions of years ago, they were close to each other, possibly one. Then, something happened that made them split and become the universe that we know today. We've known for a long time that the universe is expanding and coasting along since the Big Bang. One of the questions has been how much gravity has been slowing down the expansion of the universe. Just like when you drive a car up a hill, uh, you can slow down if you don't apply power because gravity is pulling back on you. We think that the expanding universe would be slowed down by the gravity, by all the stuff that's in the universe. One of the interesting things is that we've been able to do some work to try to measure that, and we found a surprising result. Not the one that we expected to find, but one that really turns the whole problem on its head. Kirshner's team may have discovered answers that seal the fate of our universe. They've discovered that it's not just expanding. It's speeding up. We could just simplify history and science by saying that God created the universe at exactly one point in the past. But if the universe is indeed expanding, there must be a reason why there had to be a beginning so we can say that time had a beginning at the Big Bang. We can say that time, in the sense we understand it, didn't really exist before that. So when did the clock start ticking? 12 billion years ago, there was absolutely nothing. No matter, no space, no time. We may never know how or why it happened, but a seething mass of energy smaller than an atom grew from nothing. You're inside the Big Bang, the birth of our universe, a violent fireball of unimaginable heat. For England's astronomer royal Martin Rees, understanding the Big Bang is the key to the universe. Something that was literally, originally only the size of a single atom or smaller, expanded to be large enough to encompass everything in our present universe. Only the minutest fraction of a second had passed. But all of this was puny compared to what was about to happen. Propelled by a new surge of internal energy, the universe suddenly entered an incredible period of inflation. It expanded a hundred trillion, 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 trillion times. Approaching a millionth of a second old, the universe was brimming with energy, so intense that it was spontaneously converted into lumps of matter, 
and its arch-rival, Antimatter. A titanic battle ensued. Subatomic particles annihilated each other, blow for blow, particle for particle. When matter and antimatter meet, they mutually destruct. This is the most powerful release of energy known. At the end of the battle, matter had won, and the universe was far from empty. Every time a particle of antimatter had been annihilated, the energy was converted into radiation. And that radiation is right before our very eyes. Don't adjust your set. Hidden in the interference on a badly tuned TV set is the energy signal left from the first second of the universe. The explosion of the Big Bang billions of years ago created two elements that still exist today, hydrogen and helium, both of which were the building blocks for our universe. Every time you take a sip of water, you're swallowing hydrogen atoms that were created at the very beginning of the universe. Most of the atoms in our bodies were created in the first moments of the Big Bang. We tend to often dissociate ourselves from the universe. We tend to think of asking questions about it versus us. But of course, that's not really true. We're a part of the universe. And when we ask about the origin and evolution of the universe itself, we're really asking questions about the origin and evolution of ourselves. Here at the Lick Observatory, Sandra Faber spent her early career unraveling the mysteries of the most distant galaxies. The biggest telescopes on Earth now are taking us back billions of years into the past, 90% of the way back to the beginning of the universe. View light from the furthest visible galaxies and you're seeing them as they were over 11 billion years ago. A galaxy is really like a city of stars, just as there are billions of people on Earth or millions of people in a city, there are hundreds of billions of stars in a typical galaxy. Everything in the universe, all the visible stars and galaxies, were born in the same furnace, the Big Bang. A ball of intense heat still cooling as it continues to expand. Cosmologists are not only confident that they have unearthed the universe's past, but that they can also predict its future. Space, like the surface of hot-blown glass, cools as it expands. Just as flecks of color embedded in the glass move further apart the more it stretches, so do the galaxies. Space is expanding in all directions at once. Modern cosmologists are now trying to measure if this expansion will continue forever. How will the universe end? <laughs> 